A family is moving to their new house. Griffin is playing video games in the car. He is with his sisters, Kendra and Madison. His mom, Amy, tells him to be ready for the new house while his dad, Eric, is driving the car. A realtor welcomes them as they reach the house. They get inside and take a tour. While wandering around the house, Griffin finds his sister, Madison, talking to the closet in a room. When Griffin asks who she is talking to, she says no one and runs outside. After a truck brings their belongings, Eric finds the baseball glove and throws it to Griffin to play catch. While having fun, the ball gets stuck in a tree. Griffin goes to retrieve it. Griffin begins to feel uneasy as he looks at the tree. A sudden gust of wind freaks him out and he runs to his mom to tell her about this. As Amy is busy unpacking the belongings, she doesn't pay much mind to Griffin's complaints and soon asks him if he wants to go inside and check his room in the attic. At night, Griffin goes to Madison's room, where she excitedly shows him a trick that involves touching the doorknob of her closet as her hair spikes up. They both play around with it for a while. In the basement, Amy is doing the laundry when her earring falls behind the washing machine and she gets down to find it. The washing machine suddenly turns on, freaking Amy out, and she notices something weird on her fingers. Just then, some liquid starts to flow from under the machine, causing her to walk out of there. We then see Kendra watching a paranormal investigation show when her mom steps in asking her to keep the volume down as it's time for the kids to go to bed. Amy then goes to the younger ones, telling them to go to bed. While she is tucking Griffin in, he says that he is scared of the dark, and she consoles him, saying that there is nothing to be scared of, and leaves him a nightlight. Griffin has trouble sleeping, so he gets out of bed and opens a storage door to find a red ball hanging through a wire. As soon as he grabs the ball, several toys fall from above, scaring him. The red ball goes back to a clown's nose, and this freaks Griffin out, so he goes running to his parents' room. His father goes to investigate the storage when suddenly a squirrel jumps at him. Griffin ends up sleeping with them. At night, while everyone has fallen asleep, the lights around the house begin to flicker. Griffin gets awoken by the sound of someone talking. He follows the sound into the living room and finds Madison talking to the television. He asks her what she is doing and Madison replies, They're coming, followed up by several hands appearing from inside the television. Griffin freaks out and unplugs the television, but it still stays on while the light above him keeps spinning. The parents and Kendra also arrive in the living room after hearing the noise, and Madison says that they're already here. The next day, Amy brings up what happened last night, and Madison tells her that it's just her friends. Meanwhile, Griffin ends up finding a bone in their yard, and Amy tells him to put it back. Later, Amy asks Griffin to take a box full of comic books upstairs, and while doing so, he is stopped by a ball that rolls beside him. He assumes that it's Madison and enters her room, only to find it empty. He puts the ball down and rolls it towards the closet. Scared, he turns around to leave to find the door blocked by the books arranged as a wall. He then looks behind and the ball is gone. Eric comes back home with a trap to catch the squirrel. He calls everyone downstairs as he has bought gifts. Griffin runs down trying to tell his dad about his experience, but gets frustrated as no one listens to him. Amy scolds him for acting like a baby, and a hurt Griffin just goes back to his room. Later that night, the parents leave for the dinner party, putting Kendra in charge of looking after her siblings. At the dinner party, the couple enjoys their time while their colleagues tell them that the house they are living in is built on the burial ground. Meanwhile, back home, a storm is brewing outside as Kendra tucks her sister into bed and goes back to texting her friend. Her phone suddenly begins to glitch, causing her to look around for better reception. Griffin also gets out of bed as he is scared of the tree above his window. He tries to turn the lights on to no avail. He gets scared and goes inside the blanket, whispering to himself that there is nothing to be scared of. Kendra hears the laundry room door open and goes inside. She sees the floor cracking and as she removes the cracked piece, a black liquid starts oozing out. She senses a presence and upon turning around, she comes face to face with a horrible looking figure. While the lights flicker, a freaked out Kendra gets up to run but a hand grabs her leg. The door shuts by itself as she screams for help. In the attic, Griffin finds the nightlight and lights it up to see the toy clown. He gets scared and drops it. As he picks up the light, he notices the clown nose dragging towards his back. Terrified, he asks if his father is doing the trick, but upon turning back, the toy clown barges on him. 
Griffin manages to push it away and breaks its head. He then runs to find a horrified Madison in her room. He tells her to stay away from the closet and runs downstairs to find Kendra, but gets stopped by an unseen force. Kendra manages to release herself from the hand and goes to the locked door while screaming for help. A tree then grabs Griffin and takes him out of the house while he screams for help as well. In her room, Madison sees the closet door open to the darkness as lights from the lampshade get drawn in along with her piggy. She follows to get her toy back, but the lights soon go out, leaving her in the darkness. She looks back to see her room far away. She tries to escape, but several arms grab her in the darkness. The couple arrives back home to find Griffin falling on the ground as he explains what happened. Kendra also comes, freaking out that she can't find Madison. They get inside, but Madison is nowhere to be seen. Griffin goes to the living room and the television turns on with Madison's voice coming from inside. He calls his mother and they're stunned to hear their daughter on the other side. Eric manages to talk Amy out of calling the police as they'd only blame them. The next day, they seek out the Department of Paranormal Research where Griffin begs Dr. Brooke to save his sister. Brooke takes up the case with her assistants, Sophie and Boyd. They investigate Madison's room. While Boyd sits on a chair, it flies from under him, crashing against the wall. After investigating a little more, Brooke informs them that they are dealing with a poltergeist intrusion that's more violent than a usual paranormal haunting as there are multiple spirits involved. The crew sets up their equipment in the house. Boyd proceeds to the closet to set up a heat sensor. As he begins drilling the wall, the drill gets pulled in, creating a huge hole. He tries to get it back, but gets pulled against the wall while the drill begins to make holes closer to his face. He manages to pull away with a red mark on his arm. But when he looks back, he finds the wall back to normal, along with his arm. He runs downstairs where Brooke is informing the kids that their sister has gone to another dimension, and Griffin suggests that someone go there and show Madison the way back. Brooke says that they need to find a way to do that first. Later, they try to communicate with Madison through the television after removing all the disturbances in between with the help of a device. They succeed at this and Amy finally hears her daughter's voice. They try to lead her back to them, but the poltergeist break the TV and the lights go out. A shadow that looks like Madison appears and the father follows it as it runs toward the closet. He tries to touch it, but as it turns back, its distorted face keeps him away. It suddenly screams and pushes Eric, making him fall on the table. He gets enraged and repeatedly hits the closet wall with the table leg and throws the remaining broken piece, causing the closet to suddenly light up. Griffin notices a shining pattern on the ceiling and gets closer. Amy manages to save him from the same piece of the broken table that falls from the ceiling. Brooke realizes that they have opened a portal and decides to call someone for help, who turns out to be her ex-husband and the host of the paranormal show, Carrigan Burke. Upon getting there, he informs them that the neighborhood only moved the headstones while the bodies remained buried under the neighborhood, and Madison's purity is the key for those spirits to move towards the light as she has a gift to communicate with them. They soon devise a plan to get Madison out. They throw a rope through the closet and out the ceiling that makes a bridge to bring her back. Carrigan flies Griffin's drone camera into the portal and they finally found Madison, but she gets pulled away. This alarms them and they all argue about who should go inside to rescue Madison. Griffin runs upstairs and enters the portal despite his mother's plea. They get ready to pull the rope when Griffin finds Madison. Griffin soon manages to find a scared Madison and convinces her to get back. They both finally fall out of the portal, unconscious. They get put into water and revive back to life. The family thinks that they have managed to help the spirits reach the light and pack their bag to leave. Madison tells them that she got pulled out before they could reach the light. They get into the car and before Eric could drive away, the car gets flipped and pulled inside the house and Madison again gets pulled back towards the closet. Amy rushes to grab Madison and everyone follows to help. The poltergeists also get out to pull Madison. Carrigan then commands the spirits to go back and the family manages to pull Madison back. Carrigan decides that he needs to guide the spirits to light. Despite Brooke's protest, he enters the house and voluntarily gets sucked into the portal. The family manages to get out before the house collapses. Brooke gives them her keys and the family drives out of there. Griffin looks back to see a beam of light bursting out of the house, suggesting that the spirits have moved. 
Later, the team manages to spot Carrigan through his GPS, suggesting that he is alive. The family begins looking for a new house, and when they get to a house that looks just like the old one, they don't waste any time getting out of there. After the credits roll, we see that Brooke has joined Carrigan's show as well. What do you think about this movie? And what do you think about Poltergeist? Make a comment right below. If you want to watch more from Movie Shortens, click on our next videos or playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.